Let me show you quickly how to use Desmos to do some of the same things that you'll do with the calculator as far as um, graphing with linear models and so on. So if you go to desmos.com, D-E-S-M-O-S.com, and you open the graphing calculator, you'll see a window like this one. So one example of what we do with the calculator was to find the intersection of two lines by graphing them both. So here if I want to graph a line, I can click here on the left where there's uh, places to enter equations. So in the example we did, we graphed y equals 3 plus 0.5x. So there's one line. And then we wanted to see where this intersected the horizontal line y equals 26. Now, notice that we don't see that in the graph because we're too zoomed in. So if I move over the graph and use the mouse wheel, I can scroll to zoom out and then click and drag to move it around. You can also use the plus and minus buttons up here in the right to zoom in and out. Now if I want to find where they intersect, if I click on one of them, notice that it highlights that point 46, 26. And that, just like on the calculator, tells me that when the amount reaches 26, that's at the time value 46. So just like with the calculator, you can see um, where two lines intersect like that. So that's one thing we did. The other thing we did on the calculator was linear regression. And you can do that here as well. It just takes a little more effort to type things in. But if we erase things there, if I want to enter a list of data like we did in the calculator, I'm going to hit this plus button up here, and I'm going to add a table. So on the, under the x values, I'm going to enter the time values. And if you look back at that example with the calculator, we start time at zero. So I'm going to enter zero for the first one. And then if we're doing the example with the gasoline consumption, we go from 1995 to 2004. So zero would be 1995, and so on from there. So then under the first y value, I'm going to enter 116. And then under the first or next x value, I'm going to enter 118, and then 119, and so on. And then on the x values, I have to finish entering. Like so. So then if I want to view this data, I can zoom out and I could readjust the window to view this a little better. But if I want to do the regression line, notice how it's labeled this second column y1. So I need to type white y and then use an underscore. So I'm going to hit shift and the minus button to do the underscore, which moves it down and y1. And then I'm going to hit the right arrow key equals, and then I want the general form of a linear equation. So you can use whatever variables you want here. Let's say I use a times x1. So again, I use x1 plus b. Now, notice this way, using an equal sign, it doesn't like that. But if I instead use a tilde, which is just to the left of the one on the number row at the top of the keyboard. It's the second function there. So if I hit shift and then that button to the left of the one, I can get that tilde, which says y is related to, and that's just the notation that uh, Desmos decided to use to set up regression. So the notation is the hard part here. Uh, once you enter the data, you just have to use this appropriate notation, but then it gives you a bunch of information, including the values of a and b. So it gives you the value of a, which is multiplied by x, and then the value of b, which is the, the y-intercept or the constant. So you can do linear regression using your calculator. If you don't have a calculator, you can use Excel, or you could also use Desmos. You have a variety of options, and any one of them is fine for any of the problems you need to do.